Hello everybody and welcome to this weekend silver log as we try to make sense of the silver and gold market. So thank you for tuning in and uh, let's get started. This is what uh, the intraday chart on Friday looked like and it was extremely volatile as we seen the market sell off in the morning session and then rally throughout the day. Now what's very interesting and there's lots of things that I consider to be interesting is how the market uh, dipped down below uh, to very low periods at 930. A lot of people getting stopped out out of the uh, paper markets and this is the uh, uh, very very common uh, shakeout if you will where they bring the markets lower gets out of some longs and then the market just rallies up towards the upside. Now within these particular charts, I want to go over just a few different uh, key things in here. One, when the uh, gold market sold off at the end of the day, noticed how it came back down to its previous resistance area from the uh, nighttime session where here that uh, was not the case, silver, uh, had a nice little uh, bull flag pattern and uh, the uh, key level was, we'll get into that in the next chart, but 35, 77, 78, I think it was 77 cents, but we'll get over that in the next, go over that in the next chart. But it's interesting, if you look at silver priced in uh, gold, and we'll take a look at this throughout the video, it ended the day in an upward trend where priced in fiat currency, at least US, USA fiat currency, it was uh, more of a, a sideways consolidation. So what we'll do first, we'll take a look at the silver price, then we'll take a look at gold, and then we'll take a look at silver priced in gold, which is the reversal of the gold to silver ratio. So we'll start off within the hourly line chart. And the uh, Fibonacci levels, that's the blue line and the orange line, was... Is, excuse me, is the key levels from this high and this low. So it found support at this key fib level. I was talking about this Thursday morning. It was support, found the resistance here, and then went below it. This is what resulted a lot of people into getting out of, out of their position, looking like the market was going to roll over. Of course, that uh, didn't happen. Now also, if you take a look at the Fibonacci from this high, let me do a better line than that. If we take a look at the Fibonacci from this high and this low, the key variable was roughly around $35.70, somewhere roughly in here. And look at how beautiful the resistance was found at this area, which obviously it was not found too well anyway. And this trend line here, it actually found pretty nice resistance here and got nicely above the uh, five-day moving average. So what does this tell me? This tells me that we have a very high potential for this to be that of a failed move, which can oftentimes bring that of a fast move. Whenever you have a significant moving average, and we'll say this is a five being significant, which it pretty much is, it goes below it. And then it's a quick move below and recaptures it. That's a very, very strong move. So what we'll do now is we'll just take a look at a couple hours that came into play during the session of uh, Friday. And this is from 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time to uh, 1.39 p.m. Eastern Time. And this blue line represents that key Fibonacci level. So what's interesting here is this is an opportunity where you might want to short the market. Maybe you might want to sell into some long positions. After all, it's a, it's usually a bad idea to buy on weakness and short on strength. But one of the uh, rare situations that at, that at least I know of is within the Fibonacci retracement. This would have been a great opportunity to short the market. And one of the things that I've stated was to adjust to what the message of the market happens to t tell us. Because what happened is it got above it for a little while. And, and that's normal. That, 
just because this 3577 area is supposed to be resistance doesn't mean it's going to hit it exactly on the target and it's going to sell off. No. So it comes down and it finds support. So at this point here, you're a little cautious. You know if it breaks above this resistance line, you might want to consider getting out of the short position, but everything happened like it was supposed to. It went below this level here and it's now using this level as resistance on the short term time frame. It then got above that level in here. This is a little bit of a warning sign and it find a, found a higher low at this level and lifted off higher. So at one point you might want to say right in here it uh, looks like that of a losing trade. Adjust your stop. Time to get out of a short position in a losing position that is. And very often times these areas work because it's an area where people see it collectively or a lot of people see these levels. So those who are holding long positions might want to decide, okay, now it's time to sell. Or those people might want to consider, well, it's now a time to short the market. But those people didn't want to do that at least that much. Meaning there was a lot of less people that were stating, you know what, I really don't want to short this market. I really don't want to sell too much and bingo, bango, the market proceeds towards the upside. Now what happened after this, not shown on this chart, was first this is the top of the day. The market came back down to 35.80. That was the bottom after this and then it closed roughly upwards towards this area here. So if a Fibonacci resistance area is not resistance but rather support more than anything that gives a lot of strength towards the market so what i would be expecting going in to sunday monday is for the market to continue to rally early on and most likely a test towards the 38 to 40 level and that's just most likely probability odds as that of a better than a 50 percent chance of coming into play. Now as far as the daily chart is concerned, the uh, pattern is all the same. This pattern is now this pattern. It's another a consolidation period, a little volatile just like it was in here. And the market's getting a pretty volatile right now. In fact, the volatility index, we'll get to that in a second, but right now the trend is higher. The uh, trend line that I was pointing out before, which uh, would be this one in here, was perfect support on Friday morning. So the trend continues to remain to the upside. Just because something looked like it's looked like it's been up too much, doesn't mean it cannot continue to go up higher or that it has to sell off. Yes, at some point we're going to have to reverse the trend, but until that happens. The bias is to the down or to the upside, excuse me. However, when it does happen, then what's the Fibonacci that you'll be looking at? This low to whatever that high happens to be. And if it really gets big, this one in here, then there's really a couple things that you might want to consider. One, to use an exponential Fibonacci. And number two is to look for instead of the 38.2% retracement. When it has a nice parabolic move, I'd rather maybe look towards a 23.6%. Now, as far as the volatility is concerned, the uh, market's normally fairly volatile. This is the percentage gains top to bottoms. And I think the only really trend that I really want to point out within this is how uh, it's really just the, the support level is developing an upward trend bias. So more than anything, it's... Uh, it's not too, too volatile. I still believe there's going to be days when things will really get out of control. The major moves of the uh, big gains as well as the big losses will bring this a lot higher. But for now, we're getting relatively 3, 4, 5% days top to bottoms as of now. Now, as far as the uh, longer term chart, this is the Fibonacci upside. If you are new to my channel, you haven't uh, seen too much of it. Generally, what this is, is you find a, a range period within a low and high. Within this one, it's the $4 and $8 range. And then you calculate uh, each Fibonacci upside target. 161%, which is the first one, is between the range of this 
adding the low. So that range is 4, multiplying this by 161.8%, and then adding that difference to the low. This is a 261.8%, 423, 680, 685%, and the next one is the 1109% Fibonacci. These things work out fairly well, and I've talked about how these things have worked out so well. So I'm not going to talk too much about that in this video, but what's going on today. Because we had some nice resistance at this 3140 level, and it's uh, managed to break above it. Uh, a lot of times I'd like to see how maybe we could have maybe a little bit of uh, support at this level and then break through. It makes it easier to confirm a breakout higher, but sometimes it just goes... Uh, parabolic sort of like in here and at some point when it's up high enough you got to say well you know what it doesn't uh, the sellers don't want to come in the buyers are in full force and it looks like we're going to make a test towards this level after all if, for example if we take a straight line what we'll do is we'll draw a straight line from this bottom in here and we'll match it up to this top and what we'll do is we'll match it from here and we can see that if we have the exact same move from the August breakout to the 31 top starting with the 26 low in here that would take us to this $48 level which is the next major uh, long-term uh, resistance level. This also coincides within the uh, $50 level which is the highs of 1980 and it's also a nice little psychological round number so even though this uh, Fibonacci number is $48.36 I'll consider 50 to be a nice approximate number. All right, now let's switch over to gold. And uh, still in a downward trend because, one, there's a declining uh, five-day moving average. That's one reason. Two, this trend line has not been violated. However, if you really look at things in perspective from within these lows, it's neutral. Why is it neutral? Because it's within this range. It's below the blue line. It's above the orange line. When you're above the blue line, that means you're bullish. That's the 61.8% from this low and really actually this high here actually, regardless of the fact. It is uh, bullish above here. It is bearish below here. It is neutral within here. Now, if silver is going to lead this market higher, then most likely gold will continue to move along the way. What's important to get through this trend is to be able to really not break down below this line. It's, if it can hold 14, what looks like 12 or so, I think that would be important. It's also at this key uh, previous resistance area. If it has enough momentum to, fi to find support there, it makes it so much easier to break resistance points, which is this trend line. This uh, I don't know how well this is, but this is a running average from this low, the five-day moving average, and of course the big one, this key Fibonacci level. Now this is short term. If we take a look at this on the daily chart, even though we have a break of a significant trend line, that's uh, really no reason to say that it's getting bearish because this trend line was violated. However, the Fibonacci from this high and this low, I don't got the numbers written in here, but it is above the 38.2%. So it's still in that of a bullish trend. I think as long as it can hold the psychological 1400 number on this particular chart, things would be uh, looking uh, pretty good. Moving on now to, uh, this is a gold to silver ratio. Now, I know some people have stated that they find the new chart that I put out gold priced uh, or silver priced in gold through milligrams to be a little confusing or they'd rather have it this way. Well, I don't like the word gold to silver ratio too much because if we're going to say the gold to silver ratio, why don't we say the gold to dollars ratio or the silver to dollars ratio? We could say that uh, the silver to dollar ratio is 35 and change. The gold to dollar ratio is a little over 1,400. But this is how many ounces of uh, silver it costs to get an ounce of gold. Now, within this chart, which is about a 15-year chart, I've been hearing a lot of people stating that it always finds support roughly at this area. Well, what I look at this as is we found support here. We found, again... And it's breaking below. We've got an area 
where we may find a little bounce from this level, but it's obviously in a massive downtrend. But enough about this. This is a very depressing stock. Let's now switch this over to silver priced in gold. This is the uh, hourly chart. And th what, uh, the only thing I really want to mention here is one, we found support at previous resistance. And the old uh, thing of, well, not the old thing, but I'm trying to find better words. However, we're in this range. You break below it. That's a, uh, a failed move that often, oftentimes creates a fast move. Oftentimes when markets correct through time like this and you're in a current trend, which is bullish, then it often results itself within that. And uh, if we uh, have any selling, well, there we go. We've established a trend line. Switching this to, now to the daily chart. Very, very bullish. Uh, higher highs, higher lows. We had a nice little correction in here. A uh, small one here. We're having one through time now. What this is telling us, silver is outperforming gold. If you want to uh, buy silver with gold, then what's happening is it's uh, getting a little more expensive as it is in dollars, or it's not as cheap as it uh, once was. Now, I showed you the gold to silver ratio. This is not really nothing more than a reversal of the uh, previous chart. And a lot of times what I think is a good idea when you're looking at charts is to take a look at it in a reversal form so you can get a look at a different perspective within the exact same chart. So I'm not going to go over too much on this one because I already pretty much have. Now, this one in here is uh, a longer term chart going back to 1968 and this has the uh, exponential Fibonacci from the uh, highs and the lows as it continues on and like I've st stated before when you're above this you're bullish when you're below here you're bearish and when you're in between the lines you are neutral so since 1968 the only time that this chart has been bullish at least since in here was this extreme brief period back at the end of 1979 into 1980. And this is the historic 15, 16 to 1 ratio in here. The only time this market has been neutral, at least since this uh, move below here, is a little bit here, a little bit here, <laughs> a brief period pierce in here, a small decent pierce here, a small amount here and again now the only difference is it's been uh, it hasn't been pulling back and it's uh, having uh, it's having a nice little ride to the upside it would be nice to maybe come back down to the support level and then proceed higher but when we take a look at what has happened I think it was important after you had a resistance test in here you came back you had another one that you actually find resistance in here to go lower to keep this trend alive. That has not happened. So what I would be looking for is a move up towards this level here, which is roughly one gram of silver because there's a thousand milligrams in a gram. This is about a little over 1040, even maybe 1050 we can say. You get above here and uh, well, this is, this is, like I say, this is an area where you would consider to find that level of resistance, but the market is looking to uh, change direction more than anything because it's established a nice little low. This pattern here is uh, a bullish pattern where you can make a cup handle like this and you have the approximate same one again, same size that is, and then break it to the upside. This uh, seems very bullish to me. Thank you for watching this uh, close to 20 minute video and have yourself a magnificent weekend. Bye bye. And just a couple quick points before I go. The uh, first one is what I said to be this depressing uh, stock, dep depressing chart, depressing move. And I say that because whenever you're in a trend like this, that's like a waterfall, a major cliff dive, if you will, that's uh, very bearish and Picking a bottom in this can be a very dangerous idea. A lot of people can get hurt when uh, they play within this. And I guess the way you get hurt here is if you sold some of your silver to get gold. That would be how you would get uh, really hurt. Or any way of form you play this on an ETF or whatever. It would be just 
boom, big time crush maneuver. And I don't want to go too extreme on that. I'm just really playing uh, theatrics, theatrics here at this point. But we'll finish this off with the second comment. And that is what I was stating about 3840. I, if you were thinking it's going to be like that on the first day, possible, unlikely. And the reason why I say that is because we uh, really had a, uh, a nice close to the end, of the end of the day. It really wouldn't surprise me if we have a nice move towards the upside. Now, the next test does seem to come into play roughly around this 3650, really 3648 or so level as a, a nice level that you most likely should test. Just like I state that a $50 test is coming because we had a $50 high, sort of like a $50 high in here. And then we had like a $4 low, sort of like in here. And then we got above $19, sort of like we did in here. That's why I'm. That's why I say it because when you can confirm a nice break it above this, that's usually what happens. So therefore, a couple of ways I think look uh, more probable uh, if this to, were to occur, and I think the chances it does, whether it be a week or two, well, for the big run to 38.40, yes, but. Uh, but the way I would think it would uh, play out would be something in the area of uh, either you have a nice little move up to here and maybe a pull back. Now, obviously, like we've seen before, just because an area is supposed to be resistance doesn't mean that it will. But that's like the probable. If it does do this, come back. That's your classic breakout. And you could easily also do something like come back and find support on a gap lower. And then throughout the next couple of days, uh, come back up to this level. So that would be uh, that'd be it. So the 38:40 I talk about is not for Sunday night, Monday day, or the Monday first day of trading. But I like the chances of it being over 50% through the week. Doesn't mean it will happen. Just saying I like the way this is playing out.